to talk about a new kind of bicycle horn. And it's called loud bicycle, but what's special about it is not so much the volume, but what it sounds like. So I'm going to flip the order a little bit and start with the demo. So it's, uh, it's a real product. It looks kind of like this. Um, the, it's all about safety, so about keeping people safe on their bikes. And so the button actually attaches to the handlebar right where your finger would be if you're normally biking. And so you're able to do the important things in, in a kind of tricky situation, which would be brake and steer at the same time as you can honk. Okay. Is everyone ready? I'm going to stand a little bit away from the microphone. Uh, it is loud. Did you hear that in the back of the room? <laughs> All right, so how did this crazy idea start? Well, it started um, It started when I took a trip to AutoZone and actually bought a bunch of car horns and jury rigged them so they went on my bike, not really thinking about a company at that point, but it worked really well. It worked so well, like way better than I expected. And people were asking me if, if they could get one. And so I got together with my little brother, uh, who's a mechanical engineer, and we built this kind of initial 3D printed prototype, uh, which looked a lot better than the original jury rigged version, and launched it on Kickstarter. So uh, in the beginning of 2013, I had a bunch of money and was ready to go and try and make this thing into a real product. So the way we start is got to expand the team. So to start with, the team is actually the crowd funders, the people who contributed to the Kickstarter campaign. Uh, these are all the orange countries, are places where people have bought loud bicycle horns. And they, yeah, it's actually a little bit sad because all of these countries have people that are on their bikes and really scared. Um, Denmark is not one of the countries, so they have a huge percentage of people that bike, so hopefully we'll get towards that one day. Um, yeah, so they actually contributed not just to giving the money, but they really were kind of part of the team in helping the process through going from the prototype to real product. Um, also, we've got Allison Johnston, a uh, friendly design company with graphic design. And Chris Owens doing industrial design. And Chris really took it from that original original picture you saw to what it looks like now, which is actually really great. Um, my favorite part about this is that it doesn't look like a penis. <laughs> yeah, so industrial design, it turns out, is <laughs> really important. Uh, you should take that seriously and respect your industrial designers. Um, <laughs> so it was great, uh, but we actually had a lot of trouble taking this wonderful design and mass producing it. It took us two years from the initial, initial Kickstarter funding till when we actually shipped the product. Uh, luckily, the backers did not revolt. They were all really nice, sometimes adorable, like Boris, who made this little uh, thing and shared it on our Facebook page. Uh, but in the end, we actually managed to do it, and uh, this is a picture from the factory in China where we're building them. That pillow there is because it's kind of hard to test these, <laughs> and we have to test every one. So as you can imagine, at first in like a big echoey factory, uh, it was a little bit tricky. Uh, now we have an official jig that does a really good job um, of cutting it down. But, uh, okay, so, oh, and we actually, we're on our second batch of production, oops, I jumped ahead, and are about to sell out. But there's a couple drawbacks from this initial design. One, it's a bit heavy, so people on bikes sometimes like things not to be heavy. And it also doesn't fit all bikes, it has a custom mounting mechanism that doesn't work for all bikes. And it also... People, people compare it to uh, competitor products that I think, did I forget to bring up? Um, oh, here it is. So competitors like this, which uh, is officially louder, but doesn't sound like a car. Um, so we made the loud mini, and this is half the weight, has a GoPro mount, so it fits on all bikes, and it sounds, uh, it sounds all punk it during the Q&A, because I think we're running out of time. But it still sounds like a car, and it's as loud as the original. Am I out of time? Is that 30 seconds? Okay. Great. So, yeah, does anyone have questions? How do you manage stuff control? 
So there's a anti-theft bolt option. So it's kind of like an add-on separate from the base horn so that people in cities can get the special bolts. They're a little bit trickier to use and you need a special tool in order to take it off. Uh, the base for the loud classic is 109, and the loud mini, which is this little guy, is 150, or 149, actually. <laughs> Sorry, I should have warned you before doing it. Uh, so this little guy is half the weight, but uh, yeah, it still sounds like a car, as you know. Yeah. Right now, it's mostly word of mouth uh, with some publicity, but... I'd like to, we're planning to make a loud bicycle game. And so if anyone knows like mobile developers, people who like making games, and also potentially like keeping people safe on their bikes, please send them my way. Uh, question in front? Uh, how long does the battery last and are there any rules about how loud it can be? Uh, no rules about how loud it can be. Battery lasts for three months, or two, two to three months for the old one and four months for the new one. For the lab, I don't know. Hey, Jonathan, they asked you earlier about different sounds. Uh -huh. And that was because Jay Leno did a, a short film driving through Boston. And yes. People wouldn't pay attention to regular car horns. But <laughs> it was a scream. Everybody froze as soon as they heard that scream. Yeah, actually, screeching tires and car horn sounds have been proven with research to be the ones that people react the fastest to. So they have the fastest reflexes, the screeching tires and car horns. Car horns are easier to actually manufacture and make at a really loud volume. But screaming, screaming would be cool too. The problem is that it doesn't, they don't react the correct way. So <laughs> yeah, you, you really want to have people doing the right thing in a traffic situation. And car horns really, it's like a reflex. People can't help but respond. Go ahead. So I'm, I'm from Holland, and uh, as you got, might know, my people tend to spend about half their life on, on a bicycle. Um, <laughs> and I'm curious, people like my mom would probably really, really like to keep this product out of the local neighborhood kids' uh, hands because she's a very light sleeper. I imagine, I'm curious if you guys run, ran into any type of trouble with that type of thing. So would you guys like me to haunt this again? No. Louder? No. Or longer? No? Okay. That, so people don't really abuse it that much for that reason. Right. You're honking it. It's not. It's uncomfortable. Uh, but I still think this is kind of like a band-aid situation. Our infrastructure in America is really old. It's built for cars. And so eventually we'll get the infrastructure like you've got in Holland and in Denmark. And uh, hopefully these bike horns will all go away and we could live in a nice amicable city. Uh, but for now, it's really helpful for safety. Yeah, what's your distribution model? Are you going to sell just over the web, or are you going to go to uh, uh, bicycle manufacturers, or how's, how are you going to scale this up? Good question. So all of the above would be great. Right now, it's just online uh, at loudbicycle.com. Questions? Oh. Is there a LED for battery life? Yeah, so I wanted people just to not worry about this running out of batteries. And so four months, two months, it's really a really long time. And there is an LED that uh, will tell you when the battery is charged. But if you just charge it every two months, uh, that's the only way right now to be really sure. The future, though, for another product, I'm thinking about actually making this whole front plate glow. And so you'd have like a light and a horn together um, for the future. And that one, you'd be able to tell with the light being on. Question. How do you waterproof it? Oh, good question. So um, with a gasket. So there's a gasket going around. Uh, so in this particular horn, the front area is actually the, the two individual components are waterproof. And then this front area is not waterproof. But the circuit board is in the back. And there's a gasket going around to keep it together. Yep. Uh, is there any uh, tricks or recommendations for use of Kickstarter? Oh, use of Kickstarter. Um, engage your backers. Uh, and don't worry about the ship delays. Uh, so set your promised ship time to be like way far out because people, they just want to make your thing happen. And if it's original enough that people can't go out and buy one already, then it's sort of like, you know, there's nothing that they can do. They're not going to not back your project because it's too far ahead. Okay, I have a question. So why why do you want to buy the whole, whole like a car? I mean, it's, I feel like, why? Oh, uh, so sorry to repeat the question. Uh, why would we want to use a car horn on a bike? So there's actually numerous reasons why car horns are great, the perfect sound. So 
One thing is uh, actually you could tell where the sound is coming from. So that nice broadband sound that your brain is, is like used to responding to, it can interpret whether it's on the right or on the left. And for example, if you're in a bike lane and you're honking on the right of a car, although you might think, oh, they're going to think it's a car and go to the right. Well, they're going to think there's a car in the bike lane. <laughs> so, because they can actually hear it's right there. And so they do end up reacting appropriately. And other sounds like, uh, for example, like this little guy. Like, you hear that, and you might be looking in the air for a bird landing or some kind of alien. <laughs> so the car horn is what, what we're all trained to, we're trained. Like, every time you drive, you're sensitized, thinking, oh, if there's a car, you know exactly. You're either going to, let's say, brake if you're backing out of a driveway, or if you're switching lanes. You know, they do this. I watch the people, and it's hilarious. And they're like, oh, man, I'm about to get hit into another car. And then they pull right back to where they were before, and stay super alert. So there's nothing like the car horn sound to just immediately get people to be amazingly alert and avoid accidents. And in the end, that's going to make more people safe. Uh, sorry, you'll have to ask me uh, that one afterwards. I'd be glad to talk this last question. Okay. Thanks.